What's up you guys, Sarah Ripple here with Ripple Effect Fitness. I'm gonna share with y'all just a quick and simple um, rowing warm up, okay? Kind of working on some different aspects of the complete rowing stroke, so to speak. So what we're gonna do here is you're gonna do 10 reps of each of these four things. We're gonna do arms only, so we've got the legs locked out. We're gonna do arms and hips or a hinge um, together. And then we're gonna do a, a half slide, so to speak, so not coming all the way forward. Um, and then a full slide, so the full row stroke. So an important thing to note on all these, and this might make y'all more aware of um, this muscle group as y'all are doing these drills, because it's super important, obviously, for rowing, um, and we're talking about the lats. So I want y'all to think about lat engagement the whole time that y'all are doing this. If you're one of those people out there, and there's a lot of y'all that aren't as tuned into your lats as you could be, um, it's one of those things where I found with myself way back in the day when I first started working out, um, as well as with clients, it's like once that clicks, it'll click, okay? But lats are kind of one of those muscle groups that until you really start feeling them engage, it's almost, it's, it's hard to feel them engage. Like you can squeeze your bicep, you can squeeze your quads, calves, whatever, and um, we're a little bit more in tune with some, some other muscle groups than we are with the lats. So um, I guess a little side note is if you want to get more into with your lats, you can do drills such as pull-aparts, uh, face pull, well, pull-aparts would be better than face pulls, but even though that's a, it's an upper back exercise, you still will really get the lats engaged um, and working on that. So we are working the lats when we do a pull-apart. Um, but anyway, gonna get down a rabbit hole that way. So the way this warm up, that's why you're here. What we're gonna do first are 10 strokes of just arms. So I'm just not involving any movement of my body other than growing my arms. So we're gonna go 10 of these. I might lose track of counting because everyone that's ever worked out with me knows I can't count. Okay, so then we're gonna do 10 strokes of involving a hinge with the arms. So important to note here is that you wanna go back into that hip extension or leaning back prior to finishing with the arms. A lot of people try to do, a lot of people try to row like this. So just doing everything kind of together. Okay, whereas it's a sequence of events where the last thing that we do is that pull with the arms. So hinge and arms. Okay. After we do 10 of those, we're going to do a half, uh, half slide. So not coming all the way in. Again, wait until we kind of lean back to get the arms going. that's 10 or not. And then a full, full row stroke. Which I don't have to show 10 of them. But there you have it. So to recap, 10 arms only, 10 arms and hips, 10 half slide, and then 10 full slide. And do that for four to six rounds. Four rounds will take you roughly five minutes. Um, yeah, and then I would suggest, so doing this obviously before you do a row warm up or ro row workout, do this little sequence four to six times, chase it with roughly five minutes of easy rowing, and then do your actual workout if you've got the time available to you. It's just, it's it, the, the rowing following the technique work is a good way to kind of think about what you just did and put things together before you go into maybe more intense um, stuff with your actual workout. So we'll catch y'all later.